this is for uh, this is for my buddy Anthony. So Anthony, I know you're going to be listening to this. Um, so his question, because he wants to get into MMA, yeah, uh, to, he wants to become a professional MMA fighter. And well, obviously he has to go through uh, the process, which is well, he has to train, which he's started. He started doing training at an MMA gym. He's down in Florida, and he's 25. And his question is, how do you? What's the best way? to go about it, to become a professional MMA fighter in a sense that like, what is it that you have to, what are the, the important things that you have to look out for? Like, is it the gym? Is it the coach? Is it, uh, what kind of environment that you have to be in? How many matches? Uh, I don't know, like how many amateur matches should you have before you, you go pro and so on. I know in some of your videos, you said 10, the first 10 matches you have suck. So is it yes. better to stay to do the first 10 in amateur before you go pro or, you know, and, and yeah, that, that's his question because that's what he wants to do. Okay. Well, as, as far as the, the number of amateur matches you should have, amateur combat sports experience of any type is super valuable going into MMA, whether that is judo or jujitsu or wrestling or boxing, or even if it's not an MMA, the fact that you are performing in this high stress situation experiencing all the intangibles that you don't experience in the gym for example the performance anxiety the crowds the lights the cheers the booze this has a profound effect on on psychology and one of the most crippling things for a fighter especially a new fighter is the performance anxiety for example mm -hmm. i talked about my my student ali who is a, a phenomenal athlete he's a tremendous athlete and he grossly underperformed in his fight on Saturday, even though he won, right? But he grossly underperformed. Like, if you looked at him on the fight on Saturday versus the way he performs in the gym, it's like two different people. It's mm -hmm. like a Jekyll and Hyde situation there. And this was shocking to him, but it wasn't shocking to me because that's, that's normal in a first amateur fight. That is normal the first time you step in front of a crowd to essentially forget who you are and create an imaginary monster in your mind called the fight. You know, so instead of having two entities in the fight, you and your opponent, there's three. There's you, your opponent, and the fight itself. And, and yeah, man, we got to kill the fight before we can, before we can uh, conquer our opponent. Right? Okay, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's what these first 10 amateur experiences do for us. They allow us to, to conquer the conquer the fight you know that third entity in the cage if you will so you know we're, we're just fighting one person instead of two um i think this is why wrestlers do so well in mixed martial arts it's not so much that wrestling is is the greatest grappling system it's awesome it's great wrestling has a ton to offer for mixed martial artists and i think everybody should wrestle but what wrestling really brings to the table is the fact that, um, you know, the average American high school wrestler, by the time they finish high school, how many wrestling matches have they done live in front of a crowd, in front of people cheering and booing and making noise and all the intangibles you can't train for in the gym? A bunch. They have a bunch of amateur matches. Even people who weren't that competitive still have a bunch of matches. And so when they go into MMA for the first time, they're like, this, this part of the game isn't new. Being in front of people isn't new. The performance anxiety isn't new. The butterflies and the nerves and the, the anxiety is not new. And so they can focus on performing instead of, you know, trying to kill that third entity, the fight in the cage, you know, and they, they can just focus on their opponent. So that's one of the most important things is just get exposure to experience performing in front of a crowd. Um, this is something I see a lot in jujitsu tournaments, like constantly. I, I go to jujitsu tournaments mostly for fun, for personal development. Like it's, I'm not super competitive about jujitsu. I probably should be more competitive about it, but, uh, I'm not super competitive. To me, it's like, this is a fun drill. Like when I go to the gym, you know, take striking out of the equation. So when I compete in jujitsu, I have fun. And... When I go to these tournaments, I see people who have not fought before. They've never been punched in the face before. And they are just strung out on adrenaline. They are 
They are hyped up with all these nerves. They are scared to death and they're trying to calm themselves down. And I'm like, this is so interesting. Like, I'm not experiencing this at all. And some of these guys I see, like, some of these guys are even better grapplers than me. And, and they're way, way more nervous. And I'm like, you don't need to be nervous. Well, you do because you haven't, you haven't conquered the fight yet, if you will. You haven't conquered the third entity yet. Um, but when they do, yeah, it's, they, they, they transform. They become different athletes. They become actual athletes as opposed to a guy with imposter syndrome feeling like he doesn't belong on the mat or in the cage. It's a very common thing. So that's, that's what I would say about the uh, how, how many fights. It, it's variable. You know, I've, I've seen guys with zero cage fights who were ready to compete professionally, most of whom had um, amateur wrestling experience. You know, wrestled in high school and wrestled in college. Um, but for the average person, I would say about 10 amateur fight combat sports experiences, that would be a really smart thing to do before transitioning to professional fighting. But the other part of your question, like, um, could you reiterate, reiterate that? Like, uh, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. What kind of gym, coach, things, what should we look for in, in our uh, training environment? Was that it? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, what's the best environment that he should put himself in, uh, environment and even entourage, so that he could succeed mm. in, in pro MMA? You know, in terms of yeah. um, gym selection, coach selection, like, you know, like, because a lot, sometimes people have what it takes to succeed, they have the will, they have the discipline, but then they're just, uh, their entourage is all, is all wrong. You know, because yeah. they don't know any better, so they might train at a gym that you know that's maybe uh, subpar, so to speak, or they might train yeah. with uh, you know, like like how do you maneuver so that you make the right choices so that you okay. in increase your chances of of being a successful pro, like whatever that may be. Uh, you know? That's an awesome question, and I'll tell you from my personal experience, I did everything wrong. In my professional career, I did everything wrong and I made every single mistake and I paid for it dearly. And because of that, because of that, I've become the coach that I am today. And so if I were to go back in time and give myself this type of advice, uh, I suppose here's, here's what I would say. Surround yourself with people that you can trust. That you can trust with your life. And... That, that includes your coaches, that includes your training partners, your sparring partners especially. That's sparring such an important thing. And a lot of people do this wrong because they confuse sparring with fighting. And this is how it was when, when I was coming up. Every sparring session was a fight. The sparring sessions were more dangerous than the actual fights. We got hurt way more in the sparring sessions than we did in the fights. And it sucked. And it gave us peace. PTSD, and so I go into these fights um, held back by my sparring instead of advanced by it. I would go into these fights thinking, I don't want what happened in sparring to happen in this fight, and I would cringe, and I would, I would uh, you know, I would be a shadow of my potential. So... It is super important that you, you surround yourself with first with sparring partners that you can trust. People that you know you can spar with without getting injured. People who, who you know uh, have your best interest in mind. Right? People who, who you know want you to progress instead of you know, just trying to put a notch on their belt like, yeah, I kicked his butt. Um, it is super important to have a coach who wants you to progress. 